uh, then you will be calculating the ending balance of year 2. Once you calculate the ending balance of year 2, you will be getting the beginning balance of year 3. So it would be the same formula as this one, except the year will change because here the year is A7. So we'll be changing that from A6 to A7. Then you're going to copy that formula here. Here it's going to be A8 because it's year 3. Okay, and then here it would be A9. And then here it would be A10. So when you so here it should show zero because at the end of year five you'll be paying off everything and you'll be at zero balance because your loan should be paid off. So there you go, you are at zero. So the total paid would be the same because your monthly payment is 538 and you'll be multiplying that by 12 because there is 12 months. Now you can just use the fill handle and bring it down. So you'll be calculating all these values. Okay, now you want to calculate the total. So in order to calculate the total, you're just going to bring it onto the cell. Then you'll be going to home tab, click onto the auto sum. So it's going to sum all these, hit enter. Same thing here too, you want to calculate the sum, click onto the sum and then hit OK. Okay, now what did they say here? So we have finished up oh, step 16, we have finished it. Step 17, we have finished it. Enter the formula is equal to C6 and B7 to obtain the beginning balance of year 2. We finished that. Copy the PV function, copy the formula in D6, copy the formula in E6, use the sum function. So we finished all the way up to the step 21. So format the cells shown in figure, apply a border. So you know how to apply the border. The border was right here. You can just go ahead and format by looking at the picture. I don't have to explain that. So that is your uh, step 22. Now in cell A2, you're going to enter a label called effect of various rate. And then you're just going to use the format painter and the, have the same format as your first heading. Then enter the following labels. B3 is equal to rate. C3 is equal to total paid. And then D3 is equal to total interest. Enter the formula is equal to 24. So what they are saying, enter the following labels. B3 is, okay. Oh, this is what they are saying, okay. So you'll be typing effect of various interest rate here. And you're just going to click onto this. Form a painter. And you're going to um, apply that here. Since it's the same one, it's not showing the difference. But when you type it, you're just going to click onto it. Form a painter. You're going to. You're going to click onto that and you're just going to come and drop it here. So the car loan analysis and the effect of various interest rate will have the same formatting style. Then they are saying on B12 type rate, C, my bad, B13 type rate, C13 type total paid, then total interest. Okay, that, okay, so yeah. So this is done. Enter the formula is equal to D11 in cell C14 and formula is equal to E11 in cell D14. Okay. D14. Uh, not this one. E11. This is C14. Is equal. Total paid is equal to. They said. Type D11. Okay. Then they said. Type. Uh, what did they say? Type E11 is equal to um, Sorry guys, I just got a text. I got a reply. Uh, E11 in cell D14. That's what they said, right? Read, let me read the instruction one more time. Enter the formula is equal to D11 in cell C14 and E11 is equal to D14. I think that's what I did. So this is cell C14 um, and we typed D11 and this here it should be this. So it's equal to okay. 
now what you're gonna do is they want uh, here you'll be typing uh, 2.0 percent then you'll be typing 4.0 percent okay and then it creates a pattern now you're going to bring it all the way to 12 or 14 whatever you want then they want you to do the what if analysis the goal analysis and find out so these are different interest rate for different interest rate what would be the amount you'll be paying at the end of the term and what would be your interest they want you to calculate for different interest so to kind of get an idea what what would be your payments when there are different rates so you're going to highlight the entire range then you're going to go to the data tab what if analysis you click the data table and your column input cell will be your rate hit okay and it will publish the value okay so that is your data table okay so that's all done create one for five year amortization schedule so we finished all that and then conditional formatting so use the conditional formatting for the range of b15 to b21 so that the cell with the interest range equal to the one entered in cell b3 will be formatted with a light red background and then rename the sheet to carlon i showed that already so you'll be saving the workbook and submit the excel file so in this range they want you to have a conditional formatting how do you do the conditional formatting home conditional formatting highlight cell rule you can just put so what they are saying is in this range highlight if any value with the value equal to the value in cell uh, b3 should be highlighted with red but b3 value is 8.90 we do not have any 8.90 here so it should not be highlighted but in order to do that you'll just click the highlight cell rules equal to uh, 8 point yeah 8.0s so if I say 8.90 because that's your value here hit okay nothing is highlighted but let's say instead of 8 if there is 8.90 because we put the conditional formatting now then it should get highlighted see it got highlighted because this value is equal to the value here okay but I'll just change it back to 0 So that's all you need to be doing. That concludes your chapter four.